While living in Guangzhou, China, a Chinese friend and I arranged a visit to Lhasa, Tibet. His mother is Buddhist Chinese, and I've always been curious of the spiritual bounty that may lay in the shadow of Everest. The people are quite friendly and self-sufficient, although in Western terms they would be considered impoverished. We were invited to tour the summer palace of the exiled Dalai Lama. We entered the courtyard of a small home made of local brick and mortar. The roofs of the building and homes in Tibet are traditionally flat, and atop the roof, a vicious guard dog appeared barking, growling, and snapping at our heads. A monk guided my companion and I into the home as we both squatted down low to avoid the angry dog. The furnishings inside the palace had been maintained exactly as the young monk had left it, with all the 1950 relics still decorating the interior. We were taken to the Dalai Lama's bedroom and shown a large mural on the east wall, said to be thousands of years old. The Tibetan guide pointed to the mural and began telling us a Buddhist story in Mandarin Chinese. He called the story of the monkey peoples. He went on to say that the mural was a representation of the beginning of the world, a Buddhist cosmology. I thought this odd because I had been told that the Buddhist tradition rejected these things. The mural was a storyboard arrangement, starting at the top and working around to the bottom, which told the story of the monkey peoples, who were believed to be the ancestral roots of mankind. The mural showed a group of people that would not be uncommon today. However, they glistened of white skin and blue eyes. I would say spirit-like or angelic. The holy tour guide began the story like most. One day, the monkey peoples came upon a group of visitors from another world. They were of such beauty; they startled the monkey peoples, so they kept their distance in the thick trees nearby. It was not long for the monkey peoples to understand the group to be lost, and out of compassion, they came to their aid. The guide went on to say that these beings had no way to return to their home, wherever that could be. He did not say. The monkey peoples befriended the group, and in exchange for food and shelter, the visitors taught the monkey peoples how to read and write and use arithmetic to their advantage. The castaways also introduced the monkey peoples to applied science, and as time went on, the monkey peoples reluctantly came down from their treetop dwellings and milled lumber from their primitive dwellings to build shelter of boards and sticks on the ground. In the spring of the following year, an illness directly translated a virus came upon the visitors, and each died of the sickness, which was the first disease ever known by the monkey peoples. The monkey peoples were not affected by this disease, and one member of the maroon group, a young woman, survived. Yet all the others of her kind passed away. She mourned for her lost loved ones, day in and day out. The monkey peoples could not bear her sadness and did everything to lessen her grief. She kept her distance, living alone at the edge of the monkey peoples' forest. The monkey peoples built her a small home with a garden and did everything they could to relieve her sadness. But she isolated herself for years in the hope that someone from her world would one day come to her rescue. The loneliness drove her out of her mind until one day she left her home and moved to the monkey people's village. There she became very happy, finding friends, and she took her place in the community as a teacher of the arts, such as painting, sculpting, and music. Over time, she befriended one of the male monkey peoples, and they lived together as a couple. They had many beautiful children together, which are believed to be the ancestral lineage of all Tibetan people and the beginnings of civilization.